Frank, the farmer, had a nagging wife, she made his life miserable. The only real peace he got was when he was out in the field plowing. One day, while in the field, Frank's wife brought him his lunch. Then while he quietly ate, she berated him with a constant stream of nagging and complaining. Suddenly, Frank's old donkey kicked up his back legs, struck her in the head, killing her instantly. At the funeral, the priest noticed that when the women offered their sympathy, Frank would nod his head up and down. But when the men came up and spoke quietly to him, he would shake his head from side to side. After the mourners left, the priest approached Frank and asked, why did you nod your head up and down to all the women and shake from side to side to all the men? Well, Frank replied, the women all said how nice she looked and her dress was so pretty. So I agreed by nodding my head up and down. And all the men asked, is that donkey for sale? <laughs> Upon arriving home, a husband was met at the door by his sobbing wife. Tearfully, she explained, It's the pharmacist. He insulted me terribly this morning on the phone. Immediately, the husband drove downtown to confront the pharmacist and demand an apology. Before he could say more than a few words, the pharmacist told him, Now just a minute, please listen to my side of it. This morning, the alarm failed to go off, so I was late getting up. I went without breakfast and hurried out to the car just to realize that I locked the house with both house and car keys inside. I had to break a window to get my keys. Then, driving a little too fast, I got a speeding ticket. Later, about three blocks from the store, I had a flat tire. When I got to the store, there was a bunch of people waiting for me to open up. I opened and started waiting on these people, and all the time, the darn phone was ringing off the hook. He continued, Then I had to break a roll of nickels against the cash register drawer to make change, and they spilled all over the floor. I got down on my hands and knees to pick up the nickels. The phone was still ringing. When I came up, I cracked my head on the open cash drawer, which made me stagger back against a showcase with a bunch of perfume bottles on it. All of them hit the floor and broke. Meanwhile, the phone is still ringing with no let up and I finally got to answer it. It was your wife. She wanted to know how to use a rectal thermometer and honest mister, all I did was tell her. <laughs> a man met a beautiful girl and he decided he wanted to marry her right away. She protested, but we don't know anything about each other. He replied, that's all right. We'll learn about each other as we go along. So she consented and they were married and they went on honeymoon to a very nice resort. One morning, they were lying by the pool when he got up off his towel, climbed up to the 30 foot high board and did a two and a half tuck gainer, entering the water perfectly, almost without a ripple. This was followed by three rotations in a jackknife position before he again straightened out and cut the water like a knife. After a few more demonstrations, he came back and lay down on his towel. She said, that was incredible. He said, I used to be an Olympic diving champion. You see, I told you we'd learn more about ourselves as we went along. So she got up, jumped in the pool, and started doing laps. She was moving so fast that the ripples from her pushing off at one end of the pool would hardly be gone before she was already touching the other end of the pool. After about 30 laps, completed in mere minutes, she climbed back out and lay down on her towel, barely breathing hard. He said, that was incredible. Were you an Olympic endurance swimmer? No, she said. I was a prostitute in Venice, and I worked both sides of the canal. <laughs> Two cowboys come upon an Indian lying on his stomach with his ear to the ground. One of the cowboys stops and says to the other, You see that Indian? 
Yeah, says the other cowboy. Look, says the first one. He's listening to the ground. He can hear things for miles in any direction. Just then, the Indian looks up. Covered wagon, he says, about two miles away. Have two horses, one brown, one white. Man, woman, child, household effects in wagon. Incredible, says the cowboy to his friend. This Indian knows how far away they are, how many horses, what color they are, who is in the wagon, and what is in the wagon. Amazing. The Indian looks up and says, ran over me about a half hour ago. <laughs> a blonde walks into a pharmacy and asks for bottom deodorant. The assistant, a little bemused, explains to the woman they have never sold bottom deodorant. The blonde, unfazed, assures the lady behind the counter that she has been buying the stuff from here on a regular basis and would like some more. The shop assistant thinks for a minute, knowing full well that they don't stock or sell such an item, smiles at the blonde and says, one moment please, I will get the pharmacist. The pharmacist looks at the blonde and says, can I help you miss? I would like to buy some bottom deodorant please, says the blonde. I'm sorry, says the pharmacist, we don't have any. But I always get it here, says the blonde. Do you have the container it comes in? Yes, said the blonde. I will go and get it. She returns with the container and hands it to the pharmacist, who looks at it and says to the woman, This is just a normal stick of underarm deodorant. The annoyed blonde snatches the container back and reads out loud from the container. To apply, push up bottom. <laughs> Every morning, the CEO of a large bank in Manhattan walks to the corner for a shoe shine. He sits in an armchair, examines the Wall Street Journal, and the shoe shiner buffs his shoes to a mirror shine. One morning, the shoe shiner asked the CEO, what do you think about the situation in the stock market? The man answered arrogantly, why are you so interested in that topic? The shoe guy replies, I have millions in your bank, he says, and I'm considering investing some of the money in the capital market. What's your name? asked the executive. John H. Smith was the reply. The CEO arrives at the bank and asks the manager of the customer department, do we have a client named John? H. Smith? Certainly, answers the customer service manager. He is a high net worth customer with $12 million in his account. The executive comes out, approaches the shoe shiner and says, Mr. Smith, I would like to invite you next Monday to be the guest of honor at our board meeting and tell us the story of your life. I am sure we could learn something from your life's experience. At the board meeting, the CEO introduces him to the board members. We all know Mr. Smith from the corner shoeshine stand, but Mr. Smith is also an esteemed customer. I invited him here to tell us the story of his life. I am sure we can learn from him. Mr. Smith began his story. I came to this country 50 years ago as a young immigrant from Europe with an unpronounceable name. I got off the ship without a penny. The first thing I did was change my name to Smith. I was hungry and exhausted. I started wandering around looking for a job, but to no avail. Fortunately, I found a coin on the sidewalk. I bought an apple. I had two options, eat the apple and quench my hunger or start a business. I sold the apple for 25 cents and bought two apples with the money. I also sold them and continued in business. When I started accumulating a few dollars, I was able to buy a set of used brushes and shoe polish and started polishing shoes. I didn't spend a penny on entertainment or clothing. I just bought bread and some cheese to survive. I saved penny by penny and after a while, 
I bought a new set of shoe brushes and polishes in different shades and expanded my clientele. I lived like a monk and saved penny by penny. After a while, I was able to buy an armchair so my clients could sit comfortably while I shined their shoes, and that brought me more clients. I did not spend a penny on the joys of life. I kept saving every cent. A few years ago, when the previous shoe shiner on the corner decided to retire, I had already saved enough money to buy his shoe shine location at this great place. Finally, six months ago, my sister, who was a prostitute in Chicago, passed away and left me $12 million. <laughs> Two couples were playing cards. Mark accidentally dropped some cards on the floor. When he bent down under the table to pick them up, he noticed that Dave's wife, Sandy, was not wearing any underwear. Shocked by this, Mark hit his head on the table and emerged red-faced. Later, when Mark went to the kitchen to get some refreshments, Sandy followed him and asked, Did you see anything under the table that you liked? Mark admitted, Well, yes, I did. She said, You can have it, but it will cost you $100. After a minute or two, Mark indicates that he is interested. She tells him that since Dave works Friday afternoons and Mark doesn't, that Mark should come to their house around 2 p.m. on Friday. Friday came and Mark went to her house at 2 p.m. After paying her the $100, they went to the bedroom, had sex for a few hours, and then Mark left. Dave came home about 6 p.m. and asked his wife, did Mark come by this afternoon? Totally shocked, Sandy replied, yes, he did stop by for a few minutes. Next, Dave asked, did Mark give you $100? Sandy thought, oh, hell, he knows. Reluctantly, she said, yes, he did give me $100. Good, Dave says. Mark came by the office this morning and borrowed the $100 from me and said that he'd stop by our house on his way home and pay me back. <laughs> An elderly couple was just settled down for bed when the old man realized he left the lights on in the greenhouse in the backyard. Then they heard voices. Three men had broken into the greenhouse. Scared, they called the police. The dispatcher replied he would send an officer as soon as one became available as they were all out on calls. The old man waited for a few minutes and called dispatch again. He told dispatch, don't worry about sending an officer. I shot the robbers, and now the dogs are eating their bodies. In no time at all, police were all over the place and captured the robbers red-handed. One of the cops asked the old man, I thought you said you shot the robber and your dogs were eating them. The old man replied, I thought you said there weren't any officers available. Subscribe to the channel. This is important. It will help me continue my work.